story how we overcome and we'll understand it better by and by take this time just to thank God uh, just for being able to be here uh, through the past couple of weeks uh, not only as being uh, I'm not coming to you right now as uh, Reverend Turner or Reverend Jeff brother Jeff or any of that uh, I'm coming to you as the third son of Norris Jr. Norris Will Turner Jr. Standing before you is quite difficult uh, being that uh, I'm officiating my father's celebration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With that being said, um, throughout the couple of weeks as you visited in ICU and as you have uh, been calling and uh, you know giving us your condolences, I'd like to thank you on behalf of the family for everything that you've done, for all the extensions of brotherhood that you've done from uh, the Church of Ebenezer, all of my family and friends. Uh, and with that being said, uh, I feel better. I feel better, but one thing that's kind of troubling me now is that uh, as the choir got up and sung their hearts out, as I peered out over the audience, uh, I learned a lot of things from my dad. And one of the most things that's most important that I learned from my father is how to praise God even in difficult situations. So prior to us even beginning, maybe I need to qualify the house because everybody that's here, you might be at the wrong funeral. And what do I mean by that? Because if you know my dad, as you say you knew my dad, then you knew that when he came into the sanctuary, you couldn't tell him nothing. He stood when he wasn't supposed to stand. He spoke when he wasn't supposed to speak. He wasn't afraid to lift his hands and say, thank you for all you've done for me. He done that based on the personal relationship. 
And it's not about knowing how to lay towels. It's not about knowing how to fix furniture. It's about the thing that he taught me the most. How to praise God in spite of not caring what anyone says or think. All right. Yes, sir. And then they told me, Poochie, I need you to behave. Mama, I try. But as I think about my dad and as we open up this service and as we begin to continue, I'm not here to mourn. Yes, sir. I'm here to celebrate yes, sir. the life of what we turn as call the man, the myth, and the legend. And when we leave here, yeah, we're going to do a Turner style. We're going to hurt. We're going to cry. But we got each other. We're going to get through this. All right, I'm back. Looking at the program, we're going to stick to the, uh, the order of service as it is uh, written. Uh, the reading of the scripture is going to come from the Reverend Frank Edison of uh, Austin, Texas. Uh, then we'll have a prayer of comfort by Reverend Al Kala. hearing and for your hearing and our reading a very familiar scripture from the Old Testament the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he maketh me to lie down in green pastures he leadeth me beside the still waters he restored my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I would fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our New Testament scripture will be coming from St. John, that 14th chapter. Yes, sir. And it reads, Let not your heart be troubled, Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. And where I go, you know and you know the way. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to me until my Father except through me. May God add a blessing to the reading and hearers of his word. Here we are at 
at your throne of grace. Thanking you and praising you and magnifying and glorifying and lifting your holy name above all things. We don't take for granted, Lord, that your mercy and your grace is enough to keep us, Lord. I don't want to get too far ahead, but last night we locked doors, we set alarms, we ate certain things, we even exercised, knowing and thinking that that would wake us up this morning. But it was your grace that allowed us to see another day. Yeah. Yeah. It was your grace that allowed us to be here this morning yeah. as we celebrate. Mr. Turner's life as we celebrate his love as we celebrate his legacy we thank you Lord for his power we thank you Lord for his presence we lift your name up Lord because you're still God you're still savior you're still keeper you're still a sustainer we celebrate you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We celebrate you because you are a keeper. We celebrate you because you are strength. You are a stronghold. I bring this family before you, the sons, the daughters, his wife, uncles, aunties, and nieces. Lord, let them look to your precious word. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to share in his time and his space. Every heartache, we thank you. Every trial, we thank you. Every tribulation, we thank you. We worship you, Lord, not for what you do, because you're God all by yourself. You are the keeper all by yourself. You're all-knowing all by yourself. You're all-powerful all by yourself, and you don't make mistakes. Allowing Brother Turner to bring it together, as his son said, we celebrate your life, Lord. We celebrate his deeds. We celebrate his conduct. We celebrate his character. We thank you, Lord, for his life. In the name of Jesus, I pray. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We call on you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I thank you. resolutions and acknowledgement whoever that individual is and then after which uh, we'll have expressions by uh, three individuals uh, brother Herman uh, Compton uh, it's funny I had to ask um, all I ever knew was uh, every time my dad spoke of it was always comp I never knew his first name but uh, brother Herman Compton will uh, come and speak, and then also we'll be having uh, Jackie Edwards Jr., uh, followed by uh, Jeffrey Turner Jr. Ebenezer Missionary Baptist Church, 575 College Street, Beaumont, Texas, 77701. 
Resolution, Brother Norris Will Turner, Jr. Whatsoever liveth and believeth in me should never die. John 11 and 26. Why do we mourn, departed friends, and shake at dust alarm? Tis but the voice that Jesus sends to call them to his arms. This is just another soldier going to get the great reward. He fought the fight, he kept the faith, and no, he has gone home to be with the Lord. How sweet it is at evening, after a long, well-spent day, to close the eyes in slumber and rest from the toil of day. It is doubly sweet at the close of well-spent life to turn one's face towards the sunset and quietly sink into the rest that knows no no waking except in the presence of God. Such was the passing of Brother Turner after useful life, passing away to be with his Lord and receive the eternal reward. We, the pastor, officers, and members of Ebenezer Missionary Baptist Church, feel it befitting to extend our deepest sympathy to his family and other loved ones that he left, and to thank the Heavenly Father for his Christian life. We recommend them to ever lean upon the everlasting arms of Jesus, who can heal all sorrows. If we will submit to his will, remembering that we must go someday to meet our loved ones on the other shore. Be it resolved that this copy of this resolution be given to the family with our deepest sympathy and a copy be placed in the church records. Humbly submitted, Ebenezer, Ebenezer Missionary Baptist Church, Reverend Kevin L. Jones, Senior Pastor, Sister Beverly Ford, Church Clerk, a church where the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts, Romans 5 and 5. Hebert High School, Resolution for Norris Will Turner, Jr. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives to do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. I am the resurrection of, and the life, and who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. John 14, 27, and John 11, 25. I want to be central in the internal being. When you focus is firmly on me, May, may peace displaces fears, loneliness, and worries. They will encircle you, seeking entrance, so you must stay alert. Let trust and thankfulness stand guard towards back and fear before it, can gain and, and foothold. There is no worry, fear, no loneliness in my love light. While I bless with you, rating in peace, turn your whole being into trusting and loving me, Jesus, reference 2 Thessalonians 3, 16, 1 John 4 and 18. This resolution is from the officers and members of the class of 1960, Hebrew High School of now DeFoyne, South Fork Independent School District, Beaumont, Texas. Norris Will Turner was one of our dearest classmates who attended all four years of high school with us. He was a member of a highly acclimated, well-known, an undefeated Hebert High School Panther football team that won the state championship during our school year. As a friendly guy and a football player, he gained several friends. Since he was a good friend to many of us while we were in school, we would truly miss him. Our hearts were saddened when we received the news that he had lost, we had lost another classmate from among us. According to his tender mercy, God, in his infinite wisdom, recognized that Wednesday, March the 9th, was the perfect time for Norris to transition. He noticed that he had finished all of his plans he had for him on this planet called Earth and had been washed and purified during his suffering. It has pleased Almighty God that the time was right for Norris to move from the earthly aborted to the next realm of his life, 
where he could receive the reward due to him. Therefore, be it resolved, a copy of this resolution be given to the family and a memento of a token of our love. May the Lord continue to watch over Nora's wife, Mrs. Turner, and his children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and other relatives, church members, friends, and all others who knew him as they reach out to God in prayer. May precious memories of their dear loved one, Norris Will Turner Jr., keep them ever on the path that leads to God. Prayerfully and respectfully submitted with love, this day, January the 7th of 2023, Hebert High School, class of 1960. Other resolutions from West Beulah Missionary Baptist Church, Reverend David Pritchard, Mount Calvary Baptist Church, Reverend O. Will Walker III, Icona Missionary Baptist Church, and St. Luke Missionary Baptist Church. Expressions of Gratitude. The family of Norrisville Jr. generally expresses their sincere gratitude during this time. Thank you for the prayers, the calls, the cards, the visits, and words of comfort. We also would like to thank Baptist Hospital staff for the care and compassion during our loved one's transition. Good afternoon. When I first got the call to speak in Norris funeral, I wondered what I was going to say. Gwen called me and she said, Jeff asked me to ask you to speak. She said, you can tell. Then she told me a story. So you can tell that, but I don't believe I'm gonna tell that. <laughs> you know. I thought about another time when Norris and I were together when we were in high school. Nah, I can't tell that one either. <laughs> nah, I better not do that. I met Norris when I first went to Hebert High School. We both played ball together. Everybody on the offensive line weighed 200 or better pounds, except Norris. <laughs> Norris was the smallest person, including the wide receivers on the team. He was the smallest out there. And he had the job that I thought was a job that if I had to play it, there's no way I would have played football. Norris was a center. When I was in school, they put a man right over his head because they figured they could work on him. And since he was so small, but Norris was a man beyond recognition. He, he was one that would stand up to anybody and anything. When he went to service after he left college, I didn't see him for a while. He had him out in the West Coast. He came back home and looked like every time I had a problem, I'd call Norris. Norris, man, my house caught on fire. Mike, what you talking about? I said, man, my house caught on fire. <laughs> he said, I'll be there. Give him 15 minutes, he was there. Walking with his stick. He said, man, I'm gonna bring my people in here and we gonna, pss, we gonna fix that, we, pss, we gonna fix that. And when we gonna do this, and lo and behold, Norris fixed my house in the front better than it was when I first got there. You know, again, my wife loved to have him come over because if anybody in here, well, all of y'all know Norris. Norris will take over a room. <laughs> like this, he'd have all of y'all falling out. You'd be holding your side with Norris. Norris had a joke when he'd tell my wife, 
and, and all that. And my wife would be laughing. She'd say, ooh, I miss him. I need him to come by. I said, okay, call him. And he'd say, okay, I'm coming. Tell your wife, I'm, I'm coming. I'm going to bring something with me. I'm going to surprise her. I'm going to bring her some of the more greasy links. And I'm going to bring her some of the more greasy ribs and all that stuff. And we're going to sit down and we just going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> and all that, you know. And, and, and when Norris would come by, he brought everything he had. He brought it with him. And we sit there and Norris would tell my wife joke after joke after joke. My wife would pass out. She would laugh so hard, she would pass out. Nara would say, I'm going to come back. I'm going, I'm going to my, going to get some Buddha in. I'm going to get some other stuff. And I'll be back next week. I'll be back. And uh, he would come back. Nara was a person that I could depend on. I'm going to put it like that. I could depend on. I'm going to be honest. I didn't know Nara had a middle name. Said it just now. <laughs> you know, all I've ever known was Norris. You know, Norris went to TSU for a short period of time, as you saw in the program. Left and went to service, came back home. You know, but me and Norris never lost contact. I didn't talk to him when he was in California, but when he got back to Beaumont, we got together. And if I'm pitching in my mind what the Norris family gonna do when they leave here, but I know what Norris is doing right now. Norris is singing and praising the Lord right now because that's what he was, he was all about. When Norris came in this side of the sanctuary, he was strictly belonged to the Lord. When Norris got on that side of the sanctuary, he would make you break your side. <laughs> he would laugh. You have you laughing now. He told me one time. I say, Norris, man, how are we end doing? Oh man, sir, you know you got to keep us satisfied and all that. But man, so you know, happy wife, happy wife, happy home. That's me, man. I got to keep us satisfied. Cause when I fall, man, you got to pick me up. <laughs> if, if I don't get nobody to pick me up, she gonna leave me down there. <laughs> I say, Norris, you ought to quit, man. You ought to be like that. But actually, the best friend I ever had, other than Norris, is another guy that's in Houston right now. But Norris was the best friend I ever had in Beaumont. When we were in high school, now I'm going back to high school. When we were in high school, I couldn't hardly run with Norris. That's when we were out there, you know, out there. <laughs> I'm leaving it with out there. <laughs> I couldn't I couldn't hardly run with Norris. Norris was the only person that had a car. Almost. They had him and Richard Evans and another guy had a car when we were in school. We gravitated to those people. Because every time they went, we went. <laughs> so, so we stuck close to Norris and him. Norris could go a little better than the rest. And uh, but he was he had a saying. He told my wife, and I'm gonna sit down. He told my wife. He say, "Sister, you know, it took the Lord six days to do His creation. He created everything in six days. And he say after them six days, He rest. He took a rest." He said, now it took the Lord 70 years to work on me. <laughs> he said, and after he sit down, he wiped his brow and he said, this is one job I'll never regret, but I'm glad I got him. Thank you very much. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. My name is Jackie Edwards Jr. And uh, this is my uncle, man. Every memory I got with Uncle Norris was filled with joy and laughter. Like, I'm talking about, I'm growing up, he either tickling me, and as I matured, we laughing about just goofy stuff. We could be in church, we just, 
I glance at him, he's smiling, but I'm gonna miss him. All the memories, all the lessons he taught me. And Gwen, I'm gonna make sure I come visit you when I get some time off at college. You can teach me how to make that peach cobbler. You know, my dad liked that. But yeah, I'm gonna miss him. And I just hope that everybody stay connected with their loved ones. Thank you. Granddad uh, was a granddad. Um, the stuff that he would let us do <laughs> that we shouldn't have been doing um, was elite. Uh, you know, playing with nail guns was an occurrence. Um, climbing ladders taking sockets off of plugs with the power still on. Uh, <laughs> um, driving us from uh, Compton to Dodger Stadium on the back of the truck through traffic. Uh, <laughs> man, he was, uh, he was amazing, man. Um, the way he tells me the story is the moment we saw each other, that was it. But if you know him telling the story, every time you tell the story, he goes up a little bit. Um, <laughs> so it went from the moment we met to the moment he knew to the moment uh, he had to leave. He had to sneak out the window one time or he had to jump off the roof. Or however he had to leave, you know, every, every time he told the story, it was different. But you, you get it. <laughs> um, I'm gonna miss him, man. Uh, I don't know, you know. I'm not really good at talking in public, but I'm gonna miss that man. That's a. Uh, I got a lot of them in me, you know. Uh, maybe some good and some of the bad, but I am who I am. <laughs> I'm a Turner boy. Uh, I love him, and uh, I know I'll see him again one day. Um, Thank you all, man. Thank you. Uh, looking at the uh, the next thing on the service is uh, the silent reading of the obituary. If you have the obituary in your hand, I know that you've already read it by now. Uh, so we'll just go ahead. This will be your last time uh, seeing me come up. Um, I thank all of you uh, for the words. Uh, thank you, Brother Compton. Uh, yeah, I know what story you was talking about, but uh, thank you, Brother Compton. Um, with that being said, um, the next voice that you will hear after uh, LaJoya Walker uh, bless us with a uh, song will be that of uh, Pastor Caven Jones of Ebenezer Baptist Church, my father's pastor.
To God be the glory for the good things that he has done. To Reverend Jeffrey Turner, officiate for this funeral. He has done a magnificent job in officiating his father's funeral. And I think that we should give God some praise for giving him the strength Amen. For giving him the strength to be able to stand here and officiate his father's funeral. Job well done. I want to, with his permission, he has given me the permission to do it, I want to take a moment to acknowledge members of the clergy who have taken the time to come out and be with this family and show their support for the family. And so I'm asking all members of the clergy, if you will stand, we may have some also out in the audience. All members of the clergy, will you stand please so the family can see that you are here. 
Amen. God bless you. Thank you for taking the time to come out and uh, be here for this family and to all of these pastors and ministers who are present, to Sister Turner and this entire family, all of you who are here, God bless you today. I want to take a moment before we get into this celebration message to commend Sister Gwendolyn Turner. Amen. Amen. I want to commend her for her faithfulness to God and her faithfulness to her husband and standing by his side for over 50 years and especially and especially during the time of his illness. No, it was not easy, but she did not complain. She did what God had called for her to do, and she did it all the way until the end, and I think she should be commended for a job well done. In 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verses 6, 7, and 8, Paul said, I am already being poured out. And the time of my departure is at hand. He said, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. And I have kept the faith. Henceforth, which is an early English way of saying now, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the righteous judge shall give to me at that day. And not to me only, but to all that love his appearing. Amen. 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 Praise God. Paul says, I've come to a point in my life where God has helped me to realize that it is over. That my time is near or my time is at hand. Now I believe, and I believe some of you can testify to this fact, that God has a way of letting his people know that it's getting close. Many of you can attest to the fact, and maybe members of your own family, whereas the time drew near, they began to talk differently to you. Yeah. Yeah. They began to talk about things that they needed you to do when they would not be here. Yeah. Yeah. They began to talk about how they wanted their service to be. And that's because God was giving them a realization that they would not be here much longer. And I believe that's just a blessing, and that's just the grace of God. That's just the mercy of God, the kindness of God. It's just the kind of God that we serve that will let his people know, I'm on my way to get you. Your time is done. Paul said it this way, I'm, I've already been poured out. That's King James. If you read a more modern translation, he says, I've been poured out as a drink offering. Yeah. 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 A drink offering was something that God commanded Israel to do as a part of worship in Numbers chapter 28. And he wanted them to pour strong drink in the holy place right. before the altar of incense. And it was to remind them 
that God had promised them victory. It was a symbol of God's faithfulness to the nation of Israel and that he is a covenant-keeping God. So when Paul says that I'm being poured out as a drink offering, then he is actually communicating to his reader and communicating to Timothy that God has been faithful. God has kept his word. God has kept his promise to me. God has kept his covenant to me. God has been faithful to me to ensure that I would see this thing through, to ensure that the calling he placed upon my life, that I fulfill that calling, that from the time he called me from on the road to Damascus until the present moment, God has been faithful and he's letting Timothy know that when I leave here I need you to remember that you are serving a faithful God and a covenant keeping God and a God who keeps his promise my brothers and sisters our God is a God who keeps his word and his word is settled in heaven yeah. And whatever he tells you and whatever he promises you that he will do, he will perform it. Yeah. Yeah. And as the old folks say, he may not come yeah. when you want him to come. Yeah. But when he comes, he shows up right on time. No matter what you're dealing with in your life, no matter what adversities you're dealing with in your life, no matter what trials and tribulations you're dealing with in this life, because in this life, you're going to have them. Yeah. Jesus said, as long as you're here, you're going to have trials, you're going to have tribulations, yeah. you're going to have difficulties, you're going to have challenges, but he said, take courage, because yeah. I've overcome the world. Yes, and James wrote and said, now when you fall into these different tests and trials, uh -huh. and when he said that, he used the word in the Greek for ambush. Yeah. Yeah. When life has a way of ambushing you, when life has a way of blindsiding you. Yeah. In other words, you didn't see it coming. Uh -huh. God said, even when things like that happen in your life, yeah. here's the perspective I want you to have. Count it all joy. Yeah. Knowing that your faith is being tested. Yeah. Knowing that your faith is being tried. Knowing that I'm testing your faith and that by the time I finish with you, you're going to come forth as pure gold. Yeah. Yeah. Norris Turner, and toward the end of his life, yeah, yeah. his faith was being tested. Uh -huh. But he never lost his joy. Never. Every time we would go and visit him and sit out there with him in his shop, he still had the joy of the Lord in his heart. Yeah, yeah. I'm not talking about happiness, church. I'm talking about joy. Yeah. Ain't nothing happy about not being able to breathe. Uh -huh. Ain't nothing happy about not being able to walk like you used to walk. There's nothing happy about pain and aches going all throughout your body. Nothing happy about having to take all types of medicine. Nothing happy about having to be in ICU or the emergency room every now and then. So I'm not talking about happiness. I'm talking about joy. I'm talking about something that's on the inside that's not based on external circumstances. I'm talking about when your house, as Brother Compton says, has caught on fire, you still can give God glory. I'm talking about when you got aches and pains in your body, you can still praise God and bless his name. I'm talking about even when you got an oxygen tent next to you, an oxygen tank next to you, you can still wave your hand and give God glory. I'm talking about when you're in ICU, you can still bless his name and give God glory. I'm talking about when your husband, when your father, when your grandfather, when your uncle is laying here and you know you're not going to see him anymore on this side. You can still bless God. You can still give God glory. I'm talking about joy. I'm talking about joy. And 
Paul says, the time of my departure is at hand. I want you to know there's a time that all of us are going to have to deal with. He knows our time. He's numbered our days. The psalmist said, teach us how to number our days and apply our hearts to wisdom. And we know that the longer we live on this earth, the closer we're getting to that time. Our bodies are teaching and preaching to us every morning and every evening we're getting closer to that time. Yeah. All your aches and pains and the popping that goes on in your bones is constantly preaching a sermon letting you know the time is getting closer. This world is not your home. You're going to have to depart. You're going to have to leave here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Paul said there's a time of departure. And the difference between this time of departure and the one you have at the airport is that you can't plan it with anybody else. You, you can't plan this one with your family. You can't plan this one with your spouse. This one you're going to have to answer for yourself. This is a time that God has for you, and he had this time in mind before he put you in your mother's womb, that you were only going to be here so long, and then eventually you were going to have to go ahead and leave this place. But thank God. Thank God for his word that he's given us a promise that when we depart away from here, we're not going to leave away from here the way we are here right now. That there's a change that's going to take place in our lives. You're going to leave that oxygen tank. You're going to leave that medicine. You're going to leave that cane. You're going to leave those crutches. You're going to leave all that medicine. You're going to leave the hospitals. The time of your departure is to leave this world and move to the next world. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And it's because he says, I got a now in my life. Yes. When the time of my departure comes, now I move to a now in my life, yes. to a henceforth yes. in my life. Yes. That old life is over. I fought a good fight. Yes. I finished my course. Yes. I've kept the faith. Yes. It's all over now. Yes. Now I'm facing a henceforth. Yes. I'm facing a now in my life, yes. which means that this is not the end. Yes. This is only the beginning because yes. I'm facing a henceforth. I'm facing a now. Now in my life, yeah. I'm leaving this old world. I'm leaving corruption yeah. to incorruption. Yeah. I'm leaving mortality to immortality. I'm leaving this old body yeah. to a brand new body. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody said there's a leak yeah. in this old building. Yeah. And my soul yeah. has got to move. Yeah. The scriptures put it this way, though the outward man is perishing, yeah, yeah. the inward man yeah. is being renewed yeah. day by day. Yeah. Though my outward man is shrinking, yeah. though my outward man is getting weak, yeah. I got an inward man that's getting stronger, and I got an inward man that's expanding. Yeah. And one day my inner man is going to outgrow my outward man, and I'm going to have to get up on out of here. But when I get out of here, Paul told me, we know yeah. that when this earthly house yeah. of this tabernacle has been dissolved, yes, we've got a building from God, yeah. a house not made with hand, yeah. but eternal in the heavens. Yeah. So I say to you, Sister Turner and this family, let not your heart be troubled. Yeah. You believe in God, yeah. believe also in me, Jesus said. In my father's house, there are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you. But I'm going away to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I'm going to come again. I'm not going to call Gabriel. I'm not going to call Micah. I'm going to come again. I'm going to come on December 26th and say, Norris, it's time to come on home and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. God bless you today. Praise.
Praise God. At this time, are we ready for the military? Okay. At this time, the military will come forward to give their honors.
Church, let's give the military a hand and thank them. We do thank them for their service to this country. At this time, if we can get some help with the flowers, if you would, please come and help with the flowers. Thank you so much. Thank you. Brother Turner's body will be buried on Monday at 12.45 p.m. at the Houston National Cemetery. God bless this family. Let's continue to pray for Sister Turner and his entire family. And ask that you will stand. And just follow family, follow the directions of the funeral director. Reverend Parker's going to come and lead ministers. You can just follow Reverend Parker. 